Welcome back to the Ascension series, story time with time. We're going to talk about a lot of things today. We've gotten about a dozen of this, of a very similar question. So I really sat with this on like, how do I best bring this forward? What's the question? Let's get into that. Okay. Let's start there. So we've been asked about a dozen times in the last couple of weeks, um, either something like I'm a star seed. How do I figure out what my purpose is? Or how do I arrive in divine purpose? Or how does it unfold? What do I do? How do I know the action items? All of these things. So as always, um, my guides are kicking me in the ass. So we're going to do a couple of different things here. I'm going to share with you a lot of the key moving pieces of how to do that and how I did it and how we support a lot of people to do that. We do run, or I run, um, one of the one of the few things that I get to do here with our students is I have a certification program about becoming a divine mentor in the world and an opportunity to work in our company. Um, however, it's been shifted up a little bit. So the price point on that one is it's an investment. It's a it's an investment because I'm going to change your life and put you into purpose and you're going to make money and change the world and all of these crazy things. Um, so I've been asked by my guides to break it into different components, three separate pieces to make it more feasible for those that want to initiate into stepping into or arriving in divine purpose and those who actually want to go on the journey and work with us here at Demino Mentor. So I did. I sat with my guides in a deep meditation, restructured the entire thing, and I'm ready to do it. So I want to share from that program level one, which is arriving in divine purpose is level one. It's 12 weeks. I'm going to share a couple of tips from that to support you here. Um, you know that my whole passion is to be of service. So let's dive into it and figure out how to do it. What is divine purpose is the question first. So we know that third dimensional reality, fourth dimensional reality still struggles with the nine to five job. Then there's this beautiful transition as you be, go through your ascension process and you expand your vibration, you're going to shift into a very heart-centered reality, a very beautiful heart-centered reality. And from that, your purpose in the world will be a heart-centered business. It's mostly entrepreneur vibes. Um, I have a lot of background in that. I was a business development manager for a long, long time for large corporations. So I have the 3D stuff. I know what to do, but I also just run a heart-centered business where a lot of that doesn't apply. Um, so it is it is a journey. I'm not going to lie to you. You're going to have moments where you feel lost with it. You're going to have moments where the ache is so strong that it makes you cry. I sure did. Um I had moments of complete confusion, of frustration, of loneliness, of like, what though? Like I ache for it. It's this ache. I don't know what word to use, but it's it's like an ache that's in your heart, that's in your being. That's like, I want to birth this in the world. I want to be of service. I want to change the world. Um, and it's a pretty strong ache for most of us. Star seeds in particular, we that's what we came here for. We came here to change the game. We came here to be a part of the biggest awakening, the biggest transition that humanity has yet to experience. So we feel it, we know it. It's just how do we get there? How do we arrive there, right? So the first thing I'm going to say is going to be a little bit of a trigger. Okay. Unfiltered, here we go. If you want to be important, it's not going to happen. Like, and that is a sneaky, sneaky thing that comes up, the desire to be important. We're all important. Obviously we know this, but I have been witness to so many souls who have desired to be in soul purpose and let their desire to be important, dominate their heart centered path. And it's sneaky. We don't even know that we're doing it. And there is a defining moment as it begins to unfold for you, not a test per se, but there's going to be a defining moment where you're going to choose. Am I doing this from um, a money driven mindset? Am I doing this from a, I want to be seen in the world. I want to be famous. I want to be on a stage. That was, that was my number one driving force. I wanted to be important so bad because I wanted to be on a stage because we know I love a microphone. Okay. Um, so you're going to come to this crossroad as it unfolds, when you start to discover what it is, where you're going to choose. And I see a lot of energies, a lot of souls 
go down the important one. Here's my spicy today. And spicy nice today, okay? It's still spicy. So this is what I see happen. I see people launching into soul purpose and all of a sudden dressing like there's some fucking monk or hippie or granola eater. I don't know what term to use here, but it's like all of the like spiritual clothes and you'll see them on Instagram. There's a few of them on there that I'm just like, oh, am I judging mm, kind of mildly a little bit, but it is a phase where it's like you wear the flowy dresses or you get the dreadlocks or you get the, the flowers in your hair or whatever look at me, look at me. I'm so spiritual bullshit that people go through. Don't do that. I did. I I did the the gowns and the silk dresses and the flowers in my hair and the dreadlocks and all of the things. Now I look back and I'm like, wow, if I would have avoided that, I would have arrived here a lot sooner. And I know better now, but anyways, I went through that fucking phase. So, um, and that's part of fourth dimensional consciousness. So you really got to first and foremost, look at Do I have a hidden desire to be important? We all do. You're human. You're going to have these moments and it's absolutely okay, but you can't let that be the predominant frequency because then you're going to block receiving the people who are going through what you've already walked, the path you've already walked. So we really have to self-check and you're going to be self-checking as you move through this journey. So that's a big piece of how to break through the doorway of it. If you're doing it for the money, if you're doing it to escape 3D, if you're doing it for a low vibe, unknown low vibe. So I need to get out of my nine to five. It's too low vibe for me. I can't handle it. I I want to be of service. I want to be important. I want to sign my autograph. I want to be on a stage. I want to be seen by the world. Um, I have this concept because I know how to love myself. So therefore I'm going to teach the world how to love themselves. Please. Um, that driving force is not going to get you. It's not going to happen. You'll get a couple clients here and there. You'll feel really good about it. And then it's going to just, and then you'll get like, uh, and then, and you'll always have to work in both worlds. And that's super frustrating. I don't want that for you. So self-check that. Um, That's going to also be a lot of inner child work where you're going to dive into, is there any wounds in within me about being seen, about being heard, about being valued? Um, can I, can I bring that to the world in a safe fashion? Do I feel safe to do that? So you got to self-check that. Once we start to get momentum there, we start to do really that deep healing about receiving, being seen, being valued, you're going to start to see a transition happen. So that's the starting point. Then that important thing is going to kick in. And it's either important because you want more financial flow or you want to be more seen or your ego gets in the way. It happens all of the time. I see it all of the time. And then all of a sudden your, your students start to dwindle off and you're not making that momentum anymore. So it's time to self-check. Am I, am I coming at it from the wrong frequency? Unknowingly, it's an unknown thing. You're not doing it on purpose, but it happens. So you just want to self-check that. Then we're going to move into what have I endured? Mm -hmm. Babe, what have you done? What have you mastered? What have you moved through? What have you been handed in your world that you know that you're on the other side of? When I look back on my journey, so it's so bizarre. I started with, um, I started in sales and sales facilitation, did really well as an award-winning sales facilitator, then, which taught me people skills because I was an introvert, man. I was so like, oh, no, don't look at me. Um, But it taught me how to interact with people in a really fun way way in an authentic way. Then I moved into, um, quickly climbed the corporate ladder into a lot of different positions. Um, so I've been a VP of operations. I've been CEO of a few companies in the 3d world. I, uh, business development manager. Um, so like I had this path, right. Then I moved into, I met a couple of celebrities at this thing and it turned into me being a personal confidant. It just happened. It was like, oh, I really like your, like your, your energy. And we started having this great conversation and I'm psychic. So then it turned into me being a personal confidant for celebrities. And then that went on for a little while. Um, and then I morphed in and out of a few different corporate things. I was in the fitness and health industry for a long time, a really long time. Um, so when I look back on all of this, all of those skill sets came together for what I do now, even my education. So I went to school to understand was so interesting. I started beauty school, which is so not me. I know I look 
like, I don't, I don't know anything about makeup or hair. Literally it took me two hours to figure out how to do this thing today. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so I started beauty school at a really young age and the whole time I was there, I was there for like three weeks and I dropped out. Cause I was like, no. Um, but it showed me the lack of self-love. And I was like, oh my gosh, like people need to love them to themselves instead of doing all of this shit. So that's what triggered it. And then when I was working in the fitness industry, one of my clients was a professor who taught psychology. And so I got a ticket into that and I went to school for psychology. And then I got a ticket into um, a bunch of other things that all come together to here and now. So I want you to look at what skills have you gathered? What knowledge, knowledge, not knowing, knowledge have you gathered? It's going to play a part. I promise you, every single piece of it is going to play a part in what you do in the world. Now, the second biggest thing I want you to look at, this is probably the most important thing, okay? What have you gone through? What did your caregivers do to you? What did they demonstrate to you? What hurt, pain, trauma have you endured and healed? What horrific tragedies have you gone through? When I look at my journey, for those of you that watch The 100 Days of Surrender, if you have not watched it, do not go watch it. It's so cringy. Way on the other side of that now. Oh my God, I look back and I'm like, why though? Anyways, you know my journey. Um, a little girl born to children and bounced around to a lot of different homes. I was raped right before I turned four. I um, was abandoned, like multiple homes, multiple caregivers, sexual abuse all the way into my teens, uh, physical and mental abuse all the way. Oh my God, for a really long time. Um, like I've been homeless. I've been all of the things, but I've had a lot of pain put upon me. And I was witness to a lot of really horrific things and experienced a lot. And now in my role, when I launched divine or diamond, no mentoring, when I launched this company, that was my, that's what helped me develop the program divine alignment and the elite mentor program that we have, where it was like, I knew how to navigate it. And then all of these gifts were given to me to put it together. And I walked the path. I arrived on the other side of the path. So the number one thing you can think about is what would five year ago you need from you now and that big part of your purpose if not the purpose and then you'll see how everything you've walked through everything that's been handed to you every um bit of knowledge that you've gained is somehow in a really weird way all comes together in this crazy picture all the little puzzle pieces come together and you're like oh because i remember so many times like my corporate career was wild, wild. Um, I ended up in a lot of interesting career positions that were awesome, but also whatever. Um, and I was like, I don't understand why I'm doing this because I was aching for purpose. And it was after my very last contract. Um, I did one more contract, even though I promised myself I wouldn't. And I, like, I wasn't, I did a lot of things. I was even in interior design, but anyways, um, I, my very last contract, I, realized during that contract, as it was wrapping up that I was like, Oh, this skill set. Oh, and that's what allowed me to fully launch the level of where we are right now. So does it all happen at once? Does it all have to happen before you begin? Fuck no, 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 no. You start with right where you're at. The thing that I teach in, um, arriving in divine purpose, the program is, um, you are only meant to take people as far as you are. That's it. Take the pressure off. You don't have to be a guru. I will never claim that I'm a guru. Do I understand a lot of things? I sure fucking do. Do I write a lot of amazing programs? Mm -hmm. Do I know how to do all? Yeah, I sure do. But I'm, I'm not saying that I'm ahead of anyone. This has been my path. And so for the souls out there that want to understand that, those are my people. Those are my students. Those are my, my soul family that I magnetically, we, we attract each other and I take them through and get them to where I'm at in the seat that I'm sitting in. So that's all it is. And even if you rewind back to, um, when I was so afraid to bring divine alignment to the world, Oh man, I don't know, even know why we'll talk about that another day. Um, but when I was ready and I, like, I had it all structured and I had the foundation written and I was like, okay, 
I still, I started with doing like psychic card readings, like charging $45 a session. Like what? That's how I began. And it was just one thing after another and one contact after another. No one saved me. No one propelled me. Now before, yeah, I was gifted some incredible opportunities with my education. Um, hardcore gifted. Some of it I paid for quite a bit of it. I paid for, but I was also gifted some. Um, and that was like the biggest blessing, but it was a requirement for what I established in the world. So what you are meant to do, you're going to receive the stepping stones all of the time if you're open to it. So how do we become open to it? Right. It's one of the 12 principles. There's 12 universal principles. And one of them is inspired action. So when you allow yourself to trust this unfolding and to trust the ache and say, I'm arriving, it's happening right now. It's unfolding right here, right now it's unfolding. And I do not have to figure out how I do not have to figure out when or why or what I don't have to put my power outside of myself. I don't have to wait for the golden ticket or someone to bring me along. When you just come into, I came here for this. Of course it's going to happen. You came here for this. Of course it's going to happen. When you reside there in that vibration, which is full trust and knowing the next step or the person place thing like fucking magic, I promise you is going to show up and the next opportunity is going to show up and the next aha is going to show up and you are going to bring souls to exactly where you have arrived, exactly where you have arrived, which is why if you still have a desire to be important, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do great. You're going to have students sitting in front of you and you're going to be looking through your lens, not theirs. You're going to be projecting onto them. You're going to be trying to one up them. You're going to be trying to be the best that you can possibly be instead of really, truly being present and supporting them with where they're at. So it's important to self-check that piece so that you can be in the full awareness and trust of, I fucking came here for this. So yes, it's going to happen. 100%. And there's going to be thousands of other versions of you that are walking the path that they can't, they don't know. They don't know how to get to the other side. You do, you're there. So you're going to take people as far as you are. Even if you are not all the way, you're going to take them to exactly where you are right now. Cause I promise you take a minute to think about this. Five year ago, you would probably do anything to be where you are right now. 10 year ago, you little child inner you would do anything to be where you're sitting right now. And when you acknowledge that and you own it, it's going to continue to expand and evolve. So as you're bringing students to exactly to where you're at, you're still, as long as you're not trying to be important, you're still in your own evolutionary process. So you're bringing people here and you're still going there and then you bring them here and you're still going there. And it's this beautiful, limitless journey. If I would have thought that I was just going to be a Reiki master teacher and a psychic for the rest of my life, I would not be changing lives across the globe. So I just allowed right where I'm at. This is the gift that I have. This is what I'm starting with. And then everything else continued to unfold. And I can assure you and promise you, if I can get here, no one helped me. The only gift I was ever given, I busted my ass for this. And the only gift I was ever given was one university degree, which was a huge fucking gift, let me tell you. But that's not what brought me here. That's not the thing that got me here. It just allowed me to take it to the next level. So if I can do this, if I can arrive here, what the hell can you do? What can you do? It's, it's trendy now. <laughs> like nobody was talking about star seeds. Nobody was talking about divine purpose. Everybody was still like God fearing and like, no, like even having tattoos, like, Whoa, don't do that. And being psychic. Oh, no, I don't know. Like there's a few little people here and there, but it wasn't mainstream. So if I can do it then and still be sitting here in my seat with a global company, you, you can do it because the world's ready for it. The world wasn't ready for it. When I started, the world is ready for it. The world is ready for you. And there are many, many, many souls aching to understand what you already know, what you have the knowing of. So it's going to be really important to just keep that in mind because it will happen. There's a saying, I remember when I met Colette Baron Reed and she was like, if it's meant, because I was talking about publishing my books. Um, and I was like, you know, like you've got so many published things. Like what was the beginning of that for you? And she's like, if it's meant for you, it won't pass you by. And I was like, Colette, like, that's the, that's so fluffy. What the fuck? No, I don't want to hear that. Like what actually helped you? 
And she couldn't define it for me. I will define it for you. What actually makes it happen is when you let go of trying. You let that vibration of trying, which is striving, which is pushing it away. When you let it go and you allow your ego self to be dedicated to the story of your desire. If you can do that and you can stay dedicated in your ego, two things are going to happen. Okay. Number one, your ego is going to go, mm, but, 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 and every single, but is something that your fucking isness wants to heal in your body. So every single, but what about money? But what about, but, but how to heal it? It's a limiting belief. Your ego won't tell the story of something that doesn't reside within you. So if your ego is telling the story, this is huge. If your ego is telling the story of a but, that's something that resides within you that wants to be transferred over, that wants to be healed, wants to be transmuted into a higher vibration. So you're going to be devoted to the story of your desire. You do not need to understand anything else. You're going to pay, pay attention to every single but, and you're going to heal that. You're going to dive in and you're going to heal it. Then the second thing that's going to happen, inspired action is going to move through you because it's your vibration. So when you own that vibration, inspired action is going to flow through you for the very next step and the very next step and the very next step. That's how you're going to begin. And I promise you it will happen and it will be beyond your wildest dreams, beyond your wildest dreams. I cannot believe that this is the life that I live now. I can't believe it that I get to change lives every day and I get to support other souls in changing lives every single day. Are you fucking kidding me? We're changing the world. And we have a goal. I used to want to change a million lives. Been there, done it. It's a billion now. But although we're joking together as a collective, because there's quite a few of us now on the team, and we're like, well, like, what if we just changed half? Like there's 8 billion people. What if we, what if we did four? But we're going to start with a billion. And that's what, that's our goal. That's what we're doing. So Hopefully that resonates with you. I'm dead serious when I say all this, that is how it's going to happen. So you just have to trust the process. It's not about surrendering. Surrendering means giving your power away and letting whatever happens, happens. We're not surrendering. Nope. We are allowing our ego to become devoted to the perception of our desire. That is your game changer, right? Oh, so good. All right, guys, I am going to be in Mexico next week. I have a small retreat that I'm doing one-on-one -on -one, and then I'm taking a little time off to go gallivanting with my man. Um, and Brie is also away for very similar reasons. Um, and then she's heading off to Costa Rica to have some time with, um, some family. So we're both out until March 5th, which is Tuesday. I'm arriving home on the 4th. So I'll be touching in with email. She won't be back in full swing till the, the 6th of March, um, 6th or 7th. I'm not sure I have to check. Um, but if you want to get information on, the program arriving in divine purpose. I'll give you a quick little lowdown. So in order to register, we're not taking this. The only place this is going to be is here with you and me. So we're, there's no link. There's none of that shit because I don't want random people signing up for it. I only want us as a family. You are my soul family, your soul family to each other. We have the same energy and vibration. So this is the way I'm going to do it through private invite. People who don't watch my shit won't know about it. Um, so it's going to be a 12 week program. It starts April 16th. However, registration is closing the 22nd of March. No more entries after that. And the reason for that is I need you to have time because you're going to be gifted the program fully awaken and ascend. If you haven't already invested into that, that is all my life's work. Like in one program level four of that is coming up soon. Like it's already been recorded, but anyways, so you're going to be gifted that I want you to move through it. This is this is the beginning of a certification program. If you choose to go all the way, you'll have an opportunity to work here on the team, but we're not going to worry about that. This is how to arrive. These are the schools, the skill sets required in defining your purpose, understanding your purpose, arriving in it, standing in it, sharing it with the world, how to share it with the world, how to attract people into your life for it, but what it actually is. And so it's a very small group because my bandwidth is small, but you're going to receive a one-on-one -on -one book of life session with me, which I haven't, I don't get to do that very often where I'm going to tap into your higher self, your future self, your ascended guides. And we're going to tell you what your fucking purpose is. And we're going to figure out what's blocking you so that you can begin the journey of healing that through the program, Fully Awakened Ascent. And then it's 12 weeks together as a soul group arriving and standing and cheerleading each other and supporting each other. And there's a couple of other quiet perks with that. So 
there is a payment plan. Obviously there is. Um, so if you want the details, reach out at diamondno.com, put arriving in divine purpose. Brie will be on emails up until Thursday evening. I'll be checking in Friday, right before I head to Mexico, I'll be flying out. Um, but we'll be on the email for you. And then we'll be back the fourth, fifth of March to get back to you on all of that. So if that's something that you really sits with you, be brave enough. It takes a little bit of courage to invest into yourself and to invest into a 12 week program. Um, it's a commitment and you won't regret it. Let me tell you, you won't regret it, but you're also going to meet people who you're going to be holding hands with and promoting. And then it'll be awesome. Anyways, I can't wait to meet the, the next crew. I know who 12 of you are. Um, and you know who you are too, because you've already said it. So let's see what happens. All right. I am out until next week. I will be doing the live on Thursday on Facebook and YouTube. So we'll see you there. And until I see you again, have the best day and go look in the mirror and find a million reasons to say thank you. I love you. Bye guys.